Okay. Okay. Um, I'm supposed to keep this really brief, and I've been practicing motoring through this, um, and I'm nervous. Okay. So, uh, Dockside. Uh, as you know, uh, Dockside is um, on our waterfront, and uh, it's sort of an interesting picture looking uh, southwest. Uh, Dockside is 25 acres. Um, I didn't know this. Uh, I thought it was smaller than that. Um, eight of the acres are on land, and 17 of them are under the water. Uh, there's a rock mound or a, a hill um, that uh, you can see. It's a, an old picture of it. Um, it's aged nicely. Um, it rises to 65 feet um, above sea level, uh, and I'm told it's about 50 to 55 feet above the land there. Um, and uh, as you know, it's currently owned by the state, and it's administered by the Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. And right now, the village is negotiating a contract with the state uh, to, in order to become stewards of the property, to develop it and maintain it. Uh, now, uh, as Mike said, we have been collating and synthesizing uh, scads of community input. Um, over the past five years, there's been a resident survey, there have been community workshops, um, public meetings, and different uh, research committees uh, made up of uh, volunteer residents. And so there's this treasure trove of information to sift through. And as we've done that, uh, themes have emerged. And so the next two slides are going to sort of itemize those themes that, that sort of kind of pop out or, you know, at us. Um, people spoke of uh, nature, scenic views, or the, the natural beauty of the park, peacefulness. Um, uh, there were different categories of recreation that people listed uh, when and, and talked about when asked about what they saw for uh, dockside, um, kayak, and formal game swimming. Building bridges, building boats, and power boats. Um, this next slide uh, lists um, public and private events. Um, there was a wide range of uh, input about how to enjoy food at the park. Some people were uh, focused on it being exclusively, you know, picnic up, picnics only, you know, no no structures. Some people wanted uh, to rebuild a, a full service restaurant that had a bar and could, you know, have spaghetti and behold the vista. Um, and then other people thought, oh, you know, maybe something in between, like a, a snack shack, you know, a little concession. Um, so there was a lot to say and sift through there. Um, education, interpretation, uh, hiking trails and paths, um, continuous green space was a, was a theme that came up repeatedly, as well as um, access uh, across the railroad tracks from connecting Dockside to sort of the Fair Street um, area of the village. Now, the next couple slides are um, <coughs> listing alternatives that we considered that we did not uh, include in the recommended actions. Um, and those are high impact uses, such as uh, construction of a permanent performance space, um, a full service year round restaurant, um, and a catering hall or facility uh, similar to Plum Point. Um, that was a, an example that was given to us at a couple public forums. And, uh, and power boats. Now, um, this comes with like a little mm -hmm, asterisk. However, um, in recommendations, we do include um, recommended actions of uh, putting in moorings. You'll see that for boats that are uh, 30 feet or longer that can't be accommodated by the boat club. Um, now, it should be said about these uses that the reason why these aren't in our recommendations is these are services and activities and uses that can be found elsewhere in the village. Um, and about the power boats, right now, uh, residents can put in power boats at the boat club. And at such time in the future, if, that, if the boat club is unable to accommodate uh, these boats, you know, that, that question can be looked at uh, again. But passenger ferries um, can be accommodated at the, the main dock. Um, other options that were uh, considered but not included, um, a public swimming pool, a dog run, open fires and fire pits, a pedestrian overpass going over the train tracks, um, and other construction um, is referred to here. And this does refer to uh, the fishing pier and the pavilion um, and a boardwalk. These were constructions that were included in a concept illustration at earlier uh, meetings this year. Um, alternative, yes, those are the alternatives considered. Next up, uh, we get to 
the exciting part. Um, so our recommendations for DOCSA include uh, sort of two sections. One is principles, guiding principles that it should uh, inform how development is pursued, and then the actions. So these are our guiding principles here. Um, and this is all, again, this is based on the community input. So the community has sort of called for principles uh, focusing primarily on the natural features of the park, um, developing primarily passive recreation, um, encouraging continued use of the park as a, a gathering place for the community, um, uh, development and, and uh, promotion of water dependent and water enhanced uses, um, revenue generating where possible and of course where it's appropriate. Um, this would be in the form of activities, permits, and fees. Um, phased development uh, should be included here um, only because there are a lot of ideas, there are a lot of recommendations, and we can't do them all at once. We want to prioritize them. We want any construction to uh, be uh, attractive and um, be of sensitive design, attractive design. And last but not least, um, there must be sensitivity to residents in adjacent neighborhoods or in areas of the village that are impacted by travel to, travel from, or activities in the park. So, so we were lucky enough to have an illustration rendered um, that, that uh, describes what we envision uh, of all of this community input that when you pull it together, and this is what it would look like if you were a bird flying over it. And, um, boats, some food concession, fishing, we have shoreline stabilization, that's very exciting, and um, some trails going, hiking up the rock mound, some parking, various locations. But it's mostly green, which is, uh, which is uh, what I, sort of meets the, the primary principle. And, um, so our recommendations for action are phase one, uh, implementation of a task group, it's a group of people together to help the village board uh, execute action, um, uh, pretty much also number one, <laughs> uh, even though it's listed second here. It's very important. Shoreline stabilization, this is a priority for the state of New York. This is their property, and they have identified this as priority action item. Uh, uh, construction of a public access ramp for non-motorized boats. Uh, this can be accompanied by providing uh, tow in the water access so people can wade in and enjoy the water. And also identified as an urgent need in phase one is public restrooms. And, uh, but because eventually we want the public restrooms to be part of a more permanent um, formal construction, we envision the public restrooms here that people are looking for to be temporary if they're in phase one because, um, as you'll see later, we refer to them as part of a, a bigger construction. Uh, also in phase one, providing a home for building bridges, building boats, there's a lot of public support. Whenever this came up in um, community meetings, um, the, the mission and the, the focus of building bridges, building boats, which is to connect people with the river and educate people they have uh, about um, appreciating the Hudson River. They have activities um, for children and adults. Um, so we want to be able to provide them the home if we can. Um, mooring buoys. This, again, this is for power boats that are larger than 30 feet. Um, the village will need to seek permits of the DEC and to consult with the Army Corps of Engineers before those can be put in. So that's something that you want to start you know, as soon as you can because it's going to be a long process. Um, establish a schedule of uses and activities and permits and fees for use of the park. Um, and while this is going on, though, you want to still promote gathering, public gatherings, private events, we want people to continue to use the park because they've all said they love the park and they want people to um, provide uh, limited parking um, and uh, provide a, a start working on a, a trail up to the north slope to different places um, on the later when we put the picture up again you'll see that there are these two points that provide lovely um, overlooks of the, of the river. Um, I want to in continue to encourage uh, fishing and camping um, earlier this year, or was it last year? Um, there was some, some camping that occurred by a special permit. Um, and the attention to continuous green space. That's something that we want to be recommended out of the community. Um, 
Phase two, um, a food concession and shelter. Um, and people have, this, is, this uh, comes out of, directly out of what the community has asked for. People want to be able to go and um, enjoy some food and some beer and wine. <laughs> part. Um, and this is where our public restrooms would, would be part of that building um, and available for use, whether or not you're taking advantage of the concession. Kayak storage and rental, um, lighting, um, improvements in lighting, um, education and interpretation of the site, and temporary installations of art and sculpture. Um, and phase three, uh, a pedestrian underpass, not overpass, and a trail on the south slope, um, or steps up the south slope that take people from North Street up the hill and over into the park. Um, and I just want to make a quick note about the two about the food concession and the idea of a kayak storage and rental situation, these would be um, these would be points of commerce, and so these would not be run by the village. These would be private enterprises. And, and I think that's it. So thank you.